Most actors believe that agents and managers are the ones that get them work. They're not. They're submitting you for work, but they're not getting you the work. You're getting yourself the work. Have you ever watched a television show and thought, oh my God, I should be on that show. I really want to get on that show. Why isn't my agent submitting me for that show? You're asking great questions. I've got a solution for you. It's called a target list. Yes, a target list. On this list, you're going to put the shows that you love, that you think you would be great for. You also want to write down the list of shows that your competitors have been on because if they hire your competitors, chances are they're going to like you too and hire you for a role. I usually like to do it in a list of 20. So I'll write 20 shows of the season that I think I'm perfect for. Then I research who the casting director is and I put that in another column right next to the show title. Right next to the casting director, I will write their office address, which I usually get through castingabout.com, one of my favorite sites to find out where casting people are this season. Go down my list and do the same for all those other shows. I find who the casting director is and I get their office address. Once you have your target list for shows slash casting directors, then you're gonna get pictures and resumes. Yes, you need the physical picture and the physical resume. And you are then going to send a note. Not a big note, just something on a sticky. I like to use the three by five, I believe they are. And I'll write just one little paragraph. Hi, casting director. I love that you're casting so-and-so project this season. I would love to come in and read for you. My number is, and then, thanks a lot, Lydia Nicole. Or, hi, so-and-so, just want to let you know I just finished working on X, Y, and Z project. I would love to come in and read for your project. Looking forward to seeing you this season, Lydia. Keep it sweet. Keep it simple, to the point, what is it that you want? Put it in an envelope, get a stamp, put it on there, and send it to the post office. Those target lists really do work. Sometimes it takes three to five times reaching out to the casting director. The first time you'll send a picture and resume with a note. The next time, maybe you'll send a postcard. The next time you'll send a little note to just say, hey, just want to let you know, I just finished working on so-and-so. Or you send a new picture and resume. Hey, I just got updated pictures. I wanted you to have my new picture. Looking forward to working with you. So you are building a relationship through those target lists. One of the things that I recommend doing is reaching out to your target list every four to six weeks. Why, you may ask? You give the casting director a chance to get to know you. If they see your picture and resume continuously coming through their office, they're going to feel like, oh, I know Lydia. Oh, put Lydia to the side. I think I want to have her come in for the next episode. Psychologically, if they see your picture and resume regularly, they feel like they know you. And if you're sending notes that are personal, they really believe they know you. So I highly recommend it. I can't tell you how many times I've walked into casting offices because I was following through on my target list and I was sending out my pictures and resumes and my postcards and little notes every four to six weeks that when I walked in, the casting director actually thought we had met before. One time I was at a dinner party and two casting directors actually fought over who knew me first. I didn't want to disappoint them and say, I've never met either of you, but I've submitted my picture and resume to you a lot of times. So it works. It really, truly works. So once you've done your list of shows, have a target list of producers you want to work with. Maybe they're showrunners, maybe they're executive producers, maybe they're just producers of TV shows or even films. You can go onto IMDb Pro and find a business address to reach them. Sometimes it's the agent's office, the manager's office, the publicist's office, or the lawyer's office. And if it's a director, you can send it directly to the Directors Guild of America and guess what? They will forward it to them, which is great. 
don't you think? So let me say something about casting about an IMDb Pro. They're both subscriptions. I know that they're a little costly, but if you are working as an actor and you're making a little money, you can write those two subscriptions off at the end of the year. So keep that in mind. And again, you're going to use the four to six week method of sending them something. I am a big fan of target lists. So let's talk about networking target lists. Let's say you want to do a commercial or you like a certain product and you would love to do a commercial for them. You want to research and find out casting directors who work with the ad agency that does those commercials. Typically, there are casting directors that work with specific ad agencies for specific products. You have to do a little research for that, but once you find it, you just send your picture and resume with a little note saying how much you love that product and you think you would be able to sell that product really well. Again, you're building relationships. You're building contacts. Guess what? I've got this fabulous little bundle just for you because you are fabulous actor. I got it for you. So what do I got for you? Let me tell you what I got for you. I got the PR cheat sheet, which every actor needs. You need to know how to do your own PR until you get that job where you can pay for a PR person. Then I have the 12 step audition. That's another cheat sheet. You know, sometimes you get freaked out at auditions and you don't know what to do. Well, my 12 step audition cheat sheet will help you and guarantee that you will slam your audition every time. And the third thing I got for you is the casting sites. I have a list of casting sites so you can go and just submit yourself for that next big part. How does that sound? It sounds good, doesn't it? Another way I use target lists is to connect with people that I want to work with. Even if they're not doing a project currently, I will go on IMDb, find out who their contacts are, who their agent, their representative is. And if I can't find them through IMDb Pro, I will go on social media and hunt them down to see if they're on Instagram or Twitter or whatever the platform is. And I will start to follow them and just start making like conversations like let's say it's a director or producer or even a writer case in point i am a huge fan of robert redford and years ago he was on my target list so i was always sending notes to his office even when there was no work i was still sending notes because for me it is about starting a relationship i want to have a relationship with certain directors certain filmmakers, certain producers. I want them to know about my work and I want to be able to work with them. So I target people. I'm going to send them an introduction letter, letting them know who I am. Again, a simple page, nothing major. They're not going to get my life story. They're just going to get a little paragraph saying how much I love a certain project that they did or I love their work in general and I would love to be part of their team when they do a product. So with Robert Redford, I had been reaching out to him for, I don't know, maybe five, six years. And finally an opportunity came about where there was a project that he was in. I was able to find out who the casting director was, submit my picture and resume, and I got called in. I got to audition and I booked it and I got to work with Robert Redford. These target lists are so crucial for you as an actor. They really help make you intentional of projects you want to be on, the type of artists you want to work with, the type of directors, the type of producers. I also have a target list for writers because writers write stories with actors in it. You might connect with a writer and he might like you so much that he puts you in a project that he's working on. Some writers, if they're working on TV, they also produce two birds with one stone. I love that. Writers are the boss on TV shows. They may not be the boss in film, but in TV, they're king. Writers become the producers, they become the showrunners, 
and they are in charge of who gets hired and who doesn't. So you want to make that relationship with that writer. You know, start looking in the credits to see who wrote that show that you really enjoyed. Start looking in the credits to see who was the director on that TV show. Even though directors don't have as much clout on TV shows as they do in films, they still can say, please bring this person in for the audition. I'd like to see them when you're auditioning for Mary Sue or Billy Bob or whatever. It really does make a difference. So there are three ways to reach out to people on your target list. One is through snail mail. The other is through social media. And the last one is in person. In person, how do you do that, you ask? Well, let me tell you, if you're in Hollywood or if you're in New York, there's a lot of opportunities to meet those people that you admire, either at screenings, Q&As, special panels, or finding out where they like to lunch or have dinner. You just happen to bump into them and say, hi, how are you? My name is so-and-so, I'm an actor. I'd love to work with you sometime. Can I send you my picture and resume? That's how you do it. You can also meet people in person during workshops. Sometimes they're having special workshops that maybe you pay for, which is great because now you're in the room as a professional. If you meet your favorite people that you want to work with in person, don't come off as a fan. Don't go, oh my God, I love you. I really want to be working with you. No, talk to them peer to peer. You're a professional just like they are. Hi, my name is Lydia Nicole. I was in a film called Stand and Deliver. I wanted to come and introduce myself to you because I love your work and someday I would love to work with you. The thing about workshops is that you want to bring your A game. You want to come prepared. You want to come smart. You want to listen so that maybe you have a comment that you can make or maybe you have a question you can ask. Look your best, smell your best, be ready to give whatever good stuff you have to the event. One thing about doing workshops, once it's over, it's not over. When you finish that workshop, send the person a thank you note and include your website at the bottom of your note so they can check it out if they want to find out more about you and make sure that your website is up to date. Make sure that it is not an old website but a new fresh website so that your pictures are current, what you've been doing is current, but that is a good way for you to continue the conversation by sending thank you notes. It's even good to send thank you notes if you got into a nice conversation with them on social media. You commented and they commented back and you commented and they commented back. Then I would send a little note saying, oh, it was great talking to you on Instagram or Facebook or this social media or that social media. But use your judgment. Don't go crazy sending notes and, and all they said was thank you. Don't do that. You know, if you feel like there was really a rapport, then follow it up with a little note. But don't go crazy. Again, you want to come off as a peer, not a stalker, not a fan, but a professional peer of theirs. When you put your target list together, use common sense when you're sending out packages. Keep it simple, to the point. Give them your name. Tell them what you've been doing and tell them you would love to come in and read for them this season. Let them know who you are. Sign your name to it. Keep it up, up, up. Hi, so-and-so. My name is so-and-so. I would love to come in and audition for you. I just finished working on so-and-so's project. You can reach me through my reps at so-and-so. Thanks a lot. Looking forward to reading for you this season. Lydia Nicole, you know, don't write a note saying, I really need a job or I'm going to have to quit acting. Don't do any of that. Keep it upbeat. People like to work with winners. So if you come off like a winner, they're going to call you in. If you say, yes, I would love to be on this show. I just finished shooting this other show last week. That says you are a winner. That says that you are somebody in the business that they would want to do business with. 
let's say you meet them while they're out having lunch or having dinner. Don't bother them during the meal. Say something to them when they're first entering the restaurant or say something to them when they're getting ready to leave. But don't disturb them while they're eating because they may not like you after that. Just wait. I've seen it too many times. Actors come up on industry people, be it directors, producers, right as they're eating. One time I was at a dinner with Stevie Wonder and we were sitting there and some woman came running in while he was sitting down eating a plate of fried chicken and collard greens. And this woman comes running up to him going, Stevie, Stevie, my name is so-and-so. And you know, Stevie Wonder is blind. So the woman grabbed his hand, <laughs> he had a handful of greens and his chicken, which was greasy, and she started putting his hand to her face. It was not a pleasant sight. She had grease from the chicken and collard greens hanging off her face. And poor Stevie just wanted to eat his food. He was hungry, he was tired. He didn't really want to communicate with somebody who had just grabbed his hands, a violation, I should say, and was so into talking to him. It was embarrassing. So don't disrupt somebody in the middle of their meal. Wait. If you really want to meet them, just wait till they're finished. They're going to leave. So when they get up to go, you just come by and say, hello, my name is so-and-so. Do it very cool. Don't be too excited. We don't want them to freak out because you look like a stalker. Peer to peer, professional to professional. Chill. You know, be a little sensitive. Read the room and read their table. They may be in a personal discussion and they don't want to be interrupted. Pay attention. It's better for you to say who you are when they're coming into the restaurant or when they're getting ready to exit. Not while they're in the middle of their meal or talking to somebody. Don't do that to them because you are a professional. Act like a peer. A lovely way to connect with your favorite people that are on your target list through social media. And that is start engaging with them through their post. If they put something up that maybe you can help with, that maybe you have information that you can give them, put it in there. If they put a post about a restaurant that they really, really like, and you know there's a restaurant down the street or on the other side of town that's just as good, then put that in the post. I love Cat's Deli, but you know what? Al's Deli in Studio City is just as good, and it's even a little cheaper. Something like that in the comments of the post will get their attention. Give them a little bit of information. Help them out with some good stuff. Don't go, my name is Lydia Nicole. I really love you. I want to get to know you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, don't do that because that'll scare them and they're not going to engage. But if you bring information that they can use, they're going to remember you if you do it a few times. You know, maybe their post is about a show that they saw and you can comment and say, oh, that show was fantastic. I love that actor in that show. Do you know the actor did this, 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 and this? Whatever information you have that you can contribute do it in social media. That is the place to do it. Also, the great thing about connecting with people on social media is that you can get alerts to find out when they're posting. You know, you'll get notifications. That's a beautiful thing. So that as soon as you get that alert, get on it. Get into those comments with them. Talk to them as soon as it comes. A lot of times, if you're early in the comment section, they're going to see it. Usually like the first three to five, they're reading. After the 50th, they're not looking at it. So try to get to it quickly as soon as they post. Get in there and make your comment known. One note about networking is you want to be authentic. Nobody wants to be talking to somebody who's fake. Don't try to please or impress or get people to validate you. Just be you. Enjoy who you are while you're talking to these people and then they'll enjoy you. But if you're trying to impress them, you're going to stink up the room. If you're too desperate, you're going to stink up the room. Just be you having fun. Do your due diligence. Make sure you are updating those target lists regularly. Casting directors leave a show, they go somewhere else, 
or the production moves or the casting director goes on hiatus. With casting about, you can keep up with the casting directors, find out what their business address is so you can reach out to them every four to six weeks. Most actors believe that agents and managers are the ones that get them work. They're not. They're submitting you for work, but they're not getting you the work. You're getting yourself the work. What the agent does is negotiate. What the manager does is groom you, but you're the one getting your own work. The agent may submit you, but you're the one that has to go in there, audition, and nail it. So by using a target list and submitting yourself for roles and getting to know people, you are expanding your reach. You're the one that's gonna get the work. You have to be a proactive actor. Don't sit back waiting for your manager, your agent, your mama, your daddy. You make that target list and start submitting yourself. You do it. Get busy. Let's go. Come on. Putting together a target list, then submitting your picture and resume is a great way to make it happen.